Let's talk about NAB 2025, the cameras that can capture spatial for Apple Vision Pro and some of the questions I have about these technologies that have been answered and the more question I have about them after I've seen these technology too. I'm Artist Right. So this is my Apple Vision Pro. I had this one since the product launch. In the beginning, I was using it quite a bit, but afterwards, it ends up becoming a burden to use it. You have to strap this onto your head, tighten up. because There are contents on there from Apple TV that you can watch in immersive or in spatial, but otherwise, there's a big gap, right? Interestingly enough, we have the iPhone, for example, iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max, and also the current iPhone 16 lineup can all capture spatial video and also spatial audio to be played back on these devices. And it can also play back on the device itself too. But at NAB, and starting at last year, 2024 WWDC, Apple have announced that Canon is coming up with a spatial lens that's on more of the consumer side to work with the R7 camera mirrorless. And also Blackmagic is doing something of their own as well, which is coming up with their own solution that's on the higher end side of things. And I got a chance to see both this time around. So let's talk about Canon first. And when I was visiting Canon booth, I will say that having a conversation with the people that are familiar with these technologies are great. However, the experience at Canon booth, I will describe it as very limited, meaning that they have one Vision Pro, they have two MetaQuest VR headset there that you can try on, and they have a couple of cameras to show you, but otherwise, they don't even show you the software to edit, they just say to download Canon VR Utility, there is a monthly subscription for that if you want to process longer videos. And the same software that can process the spatial video from the R7 with the spatial lens, it's the same one that can also process the VR too. So the way how Canon is doing all of this is very interesting and it's also different than the way how Blackmagic is doing it. On Canon, you will see that their lenses have two lenses or left and right, and it captures on one singular sensor. So in their software, there has to be a lot of things to happen. For example, it has to flip upside down, the left have to go to the right eye and so forth to make everything look correctly and register on our eyes correctly. So Canon requires a lot more work on the back end to get that done. And I was very intrigued as well, the fact that they have released a spatial lens, but the spatial lens not for full frame camera, it's only for APS-C type camera, which has like a 1.5 magnification factor. Nonetheless, I still think that being able to capture videos on those sensors are gonna be much better than capturing the video on an iPhone sensor in low light situation. So that's something that I'm probably gonna to try to get in the studio, maybe get my own copy just to try out, just because I am curious about these technologies. But beyond that, Canon didn't really show us so much the software solution, didn't really show us how we can get the videos from the camera, from the, from the VR utilities into the Apple Vision Pro headset. So there was a lot of things that weren't really answered at Canon booth. And the other thing too that I wanna really just mention about Canon booth is that they have one Apple Vision Pro and there's a part here that is you know the light shield and this cushion that just goes on your face like so. They just have it like this. So anybody who comes up to their booth would just be using the exact same cushion, whether they have sweat on them or not. There was no like, hey, here's a wipe for your face before. There was no kind of protective barrier or anything like that. So to me, when they when they told me like, hey, you can put this on and try it's like, well, I have one and they really want me to see the video. So I did. I cringe a little bit just because it's not that sanitary. Just be putting other people, you know, sweat and skin and everything on your face. Now, moving over to black magic black magic have done it the right way i was able to experience this ursa cine immersive camera in the press area however they have also set up something very similar in the public area of their booth so that anyone attending nab can join in on the experience and see the workflow from this is the camera that's used to capture these spatial video footage to this is the software we use to edit it and this is how the final result looks on an apple vision pro the other thing that i do want to commend black magic on in both the press area and also especially the public area or for viewing these is that on these cushion they all have these little replaceable pad that goes on here so that pretty much when you match this up against your face and it gets tightened you're not really you know having other people sweat and makeup and everything on you which is done really well in the press area it's only one person or maybe two person at a time so these are already pre-applied but in the public area what they have done that's really great is they have multiple of these and they just replace these for every single person that comes up to pretty much try on this experience so great job there really great job caring about the health and also making sure that these are absolutely sanitary. But 
let's talk about the camera. So this is the Ursa Cine Immersive. And behind each of those lenses are an 8K sensor, which is really cool. And the lens and the sensor are pretty much all individually calibrated to each other. At this point in time, the cameras are, I believe they're all like hand built, you know, they're all prototype. But I'm really curious, how are they going to scale this up? And when is this going to be scaled up to become a full flesh product? Because I think this is really cool. Now, this is taking a total different approach than Canon, whereas Canon went with the smaller APS-C camera, making this more of like a consumer that can be somewhat prosumer. This is really for pro and on the high end, and the price range is also much higher than Canon as well, relatively speaking. But the footage you're going to be able to get from this, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, this camera has a lot of really amazing capabilities, a lot of connections going in and out and so forth, but predominantly, what it comes with is an eight terabyte Blackmagic media module. And if you have a reader, if you're working on a Blackmagic platform already, you can just bring that module out, plug into your computer and download everything. But if you're someone like me and they happen to loan me this camera, let's say hypothetically, that's the case and I don't have a way to download that, I can simply plug in my ethernet cable and use the 10 gigabit uplink to pretty much download the footage directly through my network onto my drive. Now for an eight terabyte drive, filming these, in spatial at 90 frames per second, you're about to get, I believe, an hour and 20 minutes of footage on that eight terabyte drive that comes in it. So it is going to consume a lot more in terms of the space because the media is actually that much more rich and there's a lot of information being captured. But nonetheless, I think it's really cool. So there is a LCD on both sides that you can take a look. One of them pops out, the other one is just pretty much on the side, depending on how you want to do. If you have like a director of photography working with you and the camera operator and so forth, they kind of really thought this out fairly well. On the screen itself, you will see that there is a big circle. That's pretty much everything that's being captured. And you can separate them out by left eye and right eye. But most of the time, it just you're just seeing from like the one vision. You will see a square in the middle. That's where the punch in is for the space video. That is like the center subject. And then there is the kind of like almost like a trapezoid on the top and or a pillow, uh, yeah, trapezoid on the top and on the bottom. That's pretty much the area that if you look up and down, you're going to see in some of the areas out on the side too. So they also in contain the vision and you can also preview in a camera as a spatial punch in how that would look like. Now you're not going to see it in left and right eye and being able to see everything coming to life. So you're not going to really see it that way, but you get a chance to preview this on a camera, which I think is really neat. That's pretty much the predominant feature about the camera. And I mean, there's a lot more of other things, but that's really the main concentration that I really want to get across here. Now, the other thing that I do want to talk about this camera too, is that there are microphones on the top. However, this microphone is only for stereo. It does not capture sound in spatial or 360. So the way how I have been working in the past when I'm using either mirrorless or when I'm capturing footage in spatial is that I would have my camera, for example, I went out once with a Canon um, Canon R5C, the cinema one with the 360 VR lens that they have from Canon. And what I have done with that or the 180 VR lens is pretty much mount an iPhone on top so that I'm also capturing the sound and the footage in spatial so that I can do a comparison between that. But spatial and VR is different. I made another video talking about that. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can check it out. That's another area I think that needs to be developed further and really define the way how the sound is being captured for these environments. As far as the camera, we now start to see those technologies, but I have not seen that technology for sound capturing device yet. I'm sure there's ways to do it. Apple have done it, but something that's more of a consumer level device, for example, like Zoom would come up with something that has a microphone that I can just go in there, prop it on top of the camera and it will record the sound and the way how it is so that when you know, for example, I export the footage out. If I turn my head to the right, it will bring the sound to the right closer, distance the sound to the left. I, I don't know about these solutions yet. So they're not being discussed quite as much right now. And I really think that that's another area to explore in this regard. But once you're done with the footage, <laughs> back to the ethernet cable. You would download it through the 10 gigabit ethernet connection to your computer. From there, you can use Resolve 20 Beta right now, which is compatible with this Ursa Cine Immersive camera, the footage there to do the edit. Now, when you're editing this on your Resolve software, you can pretty much go through your normal timeline. You can see this in left eye, right eye. You can also choose to go in and crop certain areas out or just really make it like a square frame. Like you can certainly do that or crop certain area out. For example, you can draw some like crop line or paint in the bottom where the tripod is if you didn't offset the camera because the lens are so wide, it pretty much sees 180. So if you're not 
setting your camera like offset from the tripod, you're going to see one or not more of a tripod legs in the footage. A lot of very interesting things to think about. So they were showing us a software solution and then afterwards, the way how we get this content into Apple Vision Pro is that Apple has released a specific Vision Pro video utility. So we export directly into that utility that's on the Vision Pro and then you can just view the footage. And they were showing me the footage on here and it looks really amazing. So they're mostly of just nature scene. And when it comes to spatial video, you don't want the camera to move around too much. If the camera movement happened, you want it to be very slow, very steady, because otherwise people can get really sick because you're kind of seeing that, or motion sickness, because you're seeing that spatial or almost like 3D vision of the whole thing. And if you have motion sickness, this may not be the one for you, but being able to see that in the environment, look around it, look like a dork when because nobody else see what you're looking at, I think is really cool. I don't have a footage of me looking like a dork there, but being able to capture these footage, I thought was really interesting. And I want to like, just try this out. The other thing too, I thought would be interesting would be what happened if I filmed these videos in spatial and then upload one online and see how that's going to work. I think to me, being able to see this technology further develop even a year and a half after Division Pro have been released, it's really great to see. The fact that now we have two cameras that are not the iPhone that has the capability to capture at higher ISO, lower light situation in different scenarios, I think that's great. Sound is still something that I think is missing from this equation. And even these capture technology right now, they're just still in its infancy. And we're seeing this develop to address all these, you know, technology, these emerging media as we're speaking. Is This is exciting to me, but there's also a lot more questions too. For example, one question I asked is when I film spatial, on my iPhone, on a compatible iPhone. I can view it on the phone as a 2D footage right there. It's lower resolution, but I can do that. I can upload this to my Vision Pro and see it in full spatial, which is really awesome. Is there something like that? For example, this exact footage that I'm getting from this particular camera, or even from the Canon for that matter, what happened if I upload this to an iPhone? Will I get a 2D map out of this? Or what's going to happen? Is there any way to do that at all? Those are some of the questions I don't have answers to them yet. Sound will be another one, as I mentioned already a few times in this video, that we don't have the full answer to these. And I think the biggest thing for me is the distribution model. Can I just upload these spatial videos to YouTube? And if you guys have a spatial headset, you can just pop it on, being able to view these in spatial. And if not, you just view these in 2D. Does it work the same way? in that regard? Or is there a special way to develop this or to distribute this that doesn't necessarily involve me sending over the file and going through the Apple Vision Pro video utility and so forth? Like, I'm, you know, a lot more questions is still to come from this. And I think the workflow is still being defined. But after talking to the Blackmagic people, I feel like this is a move in the right direction, especially on the higher end of things. But it does give us more room too that if we take this even just as a consumer and even just like the Canon camera, there's a lot of things we can really do with this. And if this technology ever gain a critical mass to it, I think that would be absolutely amazing. Now, like I said in the very beginning of this video, having to strap this on your face is pretty much assure in a way that I would love to see the spatial capture and just have like a field in front of you that you can just see hologram. I think that might be a little bit easier for everyone to attain this technology where you don't really constantly have to have this on your face. I don't know where this is going. I'm just excited to see these technology and especially this preview coming from these two camera companies right now. So at least we have a glimpse into what is going to become out of this immersive experience. Because one thing too that I said in my past videos and I also shared with this with a couple of uh, other individuals in the media area too is that if you're doing an interview with your family you're just filming your family right now if you have the capability to do spatial if your iPhone's capable of that just film it in spatial right now because you can have the next generation two three generations later just watch this and if this technology is still around they can watch that person talking as if they were there. And I think that is really cool. So I'm gonna leave it with that on a more personal note that way. As a family heirloom, I think that would be really cool. But again, we're seeing really great technologies on the bleeding edge. I wish more companies were talking about this. If you have any questions or comment, please share them with me. Give this a like, subscribe, hit the bell if you're new. I'm Art and I thank you for your time.